which is like little boop, 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 punch-ins. Kind of like an orange skin. Hi everyone. I will be showing you how to spot a fake Hermes bag and what exactly makes me so qualified. I have some fake packaging as well as some real packaging that I can literally pair side to side for you as well as the actual handbag itself. You'll have to stick around until the very end. Now there's two different kinds of things I would like to be comparing regarding the packaging. The first kind of packaging I'll be talking about the shopping bag and the second kind of packaging I'll be talking about today is the packaging of the item itself. And then kind of the third category we'll be talking about the handbag. So first category we'll be talking about the shopping bag. Now I have a fake handbag and a shopping bag and the packaging and the box and everything because my boyfriend went on a business trip for five weeks in Vietnam and he encountered a lot of fake handbags. Don't buy fakes, kids, the same way they always tell you don't do drugs. Because I noticed a different quality in performance in the fake one versus the new one. I'm not terribly happy with the fake bag because it did not hold up very well in quality. But at the same point, I was actually happy that I got a chance to use it because it really showed me how bad fake bags are. And the only reason I used it was because I brought two bags on my vacation. A nice bag, my Chanel 20cc, and lambskin, pink lamb skin and the fake one. I did not want to ruin that one so I used the fake one. Sunscreen can really gunk up things. Sunscreen really gunked up that bag which I'm grateful it gunked up the fake bag and not my real one. But my bag wasn't a super fake so I can't attest to the quality of the super fake bags compared to the real ones. But I'm not saying a super fake is worth it. It's very controversial whether or not a fake bag is as good as the original even if it's a super fake so I won't be going there in this video but even still in my personal opinion a super fake still doesn't feel quite right compared to a real bag. Something feels lacking still. Hence why I don't buy super fakes and the fake bag that I got was a gift and I did not buy it myself because I don't condone buying fakes. If you look at these two shopping bags, I don't know if you can tell, this one is a little bit shinier than this one, which has a matte finish, but the straps are different as well. This one, the real one, which is on this side, has a brown colored strap, lighter brown, than this one, which is a darker brown, which is almost black. This one feels like some kind of plastic material, plasticky polyester material, nylon or something. This one feels like it's a natural fiber, like wool or cotton or linen. So in that case, it feels a lot better plus there's more fibers coming off of the string itself than this one and this one is thicker so you when you compress the string pinch it between your fingers it compresses less than this string which compresses more so there's more air in this it's not as substantial of a strap because you know it's fake and also if we pull the inside of these out you can kind of see it in the camera here this one is actually knotted this one is just like a shoelace tip at the end of it keeping the strap from falling out of the hole on the bag the surface textures of these bags is also very different the real one has more of a circular pattern with cracks between it this one is just like random ziggy pattern and the logos are very different as well. From a first glance, you can tell they did a very good print job on the fake one. But if you look a little bit closer, you'll see that the eye of the horse is missing on this one, even though it's a bigger print than this one. You see how this is a bigger logo than this one? Yet this one retains much more detail than this bigger print because it's a better quality print. And that's what Hermes quality is, and I never realized it until I started looking at the fake bag compared to the real one where you can see the little dot on the horse's eye on this smaller bag versus this bag where you can't even see the horse's eye, which truly is a good print. And also the spokes on this are a lot more clean compared to the spokes on the fake one where the spokes are a little less clean where they hit the outer edge of the wheel. There's a little bit of a blobbing. It's not as clean of a finished edge. And in addition to that, the font is very different too. As we continue on to our roast, one thing I want to mention as well is that if you're not completely sure what a real item looks like because you don't have it at hand on reference and tangibly, you can literally Google image search the thing that you want to look for and compare it to the item you have on hand that you're trying to authenticate or check yourself because you can do 
easily a Google search of the Hermes logo and you'll pull up images that'll show you what the logo is supposed to look like. So you can tell that this is a fake if you looked up the real logo, that it's missing some details and it's not as clean as the original. So that's the simple way if you don't have the item at home. Another thing I was mentioning just now about the font is that the two on this bag is bigger at the top than the bottom. So the two is kind of lopsided compared to this number two and the 24. Blah, blah, blah. And the accent IQ over the E on Sant Honore is different than the accent IQ over the Sant Honore 2. And the accent over the E in Hermes is also different as well. This one prints it a lot closer, the E, uh, versus this one, the fake one. Having an educated fake roast is very fun. I'm enjoying this. I'm learning so many things and details about the brand. We're gonna have a look at the bottom as well as we're roasting the heck out of this. There's a Chinese symbol for recycle that is also the same as on here, which is kind of ironic that the detail is the same. Um, unless it's a common one, then I guess not. The font on the AC is different on this one, the real one, compared to the fake one as well. Huh. The real one is 40% post-consumer recycled content and 100% recyclable. Manufactured by S. Ticarda, made in Italy. Hermes is so fancy, y'all. Even their shopping bags are made in Italy. This one doesn't say made in Italy. There's not any text, a fake one. Not to even make it even worse, to give itself way even more. The edges here are terribly finished. They're white. And we look at the construction of the shopping bag itself. Hermes puts a little piece of paper at the very bottom over the part that it origami folds together compared to the fake one, which is just open to the construction of the bones of the bag itself. If you're enjoying this educated fake versus real roast, then what are you waiting for? Give this video a like right now because it helps spread this video to other people who would like to see this educated roast. If you love couture, style, and analysis, aka CSA, then please like and subscribe and turn on the bell to get your weekly notifications of the CSA PSA Hot at the Press Weekly because that's all we do here is fashion, fashion history, and couture. So if you want to not miss out on anything we have related to that and the videos we have coming up, then you'll want to subscribe. So I have a MS Twilly box here, just that I'm using for reference compared to the fake bag box that I've already got. We'll be able to see that the texture of the real Twilly box is different than the texture of this box, which is a little bit more uniform. The one on the Hermes Twilly box is a little bit more randomized, but it's still pretty uniform, but not as uniform as texture on this, which is like little boop, 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 punch-ins. Kind of like an orange skin. If you ever looked at an orange skin real closely, it's like in bold. This is literally what it looks like. I wonder if Hermes did that on purpose. It's orange and it has texture of an orange. Kind of metaphorical Hermes. This one looks like it's very machined. It's not uh, a softened here. The dimples here are a lot more harsh compared to the dimples here. And there's no brown rim. Hermes boxes, not just this one, will have like this uh, dark colored brown rim around the edges. This one does not. And the bracelet box and this other box that I got from my dad as a gift from Hermes also has that trim around it. So if this was truly an authentic Hermes box, there would be that brown trim around it. But it does not. It would have that on the lid. Just the lid. It also did not come with any this Hermes ribbon wrapped around it. Which is also an essential piece for it to be an authentic Hermes item. The detail on this is just terrible on this logo versus this logo. The outline of where they just stamp the logo on this box. It's a different color slightly and the edges are dirty. And the print is just so staticky compared to this one. This one has better print quality compared to this one. It really shows you how far things are. It's also missing the word Paris under the Hermes thing here on the fake one. Another giant giveaway is that there's Chinese text and a 19KL sticker on here, which I don't know what that means. Hermes labels for handbags and things, handbags I know at least, have a lot more detail and they do not look like this kind of sticker. Maybe I can find a photo and insert it on the screen, but they do not look like this. And if we look at more things about the box itself, it's white on the inside, which, oh, I did not realize this. The This is white on the inside, but this is orange on the inside. I, now, I don't know if this is different for Emma's handbag boxes, if they're white on the inside, but the other packaging has orange on the inside, but that's already a difference there. I would assume they're orange on the inside. Another very subtle difference is that the Hermes orange 
which is more matte and more muted in color on this box compared to this box. They're similar oranges. They got it pretty well matched, but you can tell this is a brighter orange and this is more of a muted orange. Hermes ain't that flashy. Same with the shopping bag too. You can tell this is a brighter orange and this is a darker, more muted orange. The matte finish also kind of may help make it look darker too. Here's my real one. Here's my fake one. I wore it to Orlando in Disneyland and it was my beat up bag. After going through all of that, I don't think I would ever <laughs> want to go to another theme park with a designer handbag because sunscreen gets all over it and it's a mess to clean up. But enough about that. I know you guys want to get down to me smoking the bags. I have two different size bags, so some things might vary between the models, but for the most part, a lot of the details do stay pretty much the same. This is a vintage bag, so some of the details here I know are going to be different on here, such as the fact that this is a double D ring versus this is a single ring where I clip my strap onto because it's a vintage handbag. But some things don't really change, such as uh, the details and craftsmanship. And one detail that stuck out to me when I was examining the fake bag is the fact that the saddle stitch. It's, it can be easy to fake the saddle stitch too, but this fake bag, which is not a super fake. I'm not comparing a super fake today, guys. I'm sorry, I'm not roasting a super fake. I haven't seen one in the wild and I probably couldn't tell if it came across me because they look so good. The stitching is perfectly straight and if you're a fellow Hermes fan you would know that Hermes has saddle stitching which everything is slanted and the stitches are imperfect. They're not perfect and they're done by hand so what that means is that not every single stitch is going to be perfect but they do try to make it as humanly perfect as they can so that means it has to be angled for it to be done by hand and if it's done straight like this then it's done by a machine which means every single stitch is perfect. Another thing that is alarming is that this hand bag has a very thin tapered edge around the handle and things but this is super thick and globby it's not as tapered and not as well crafted another thing too is that on the little piece of leather bit here that attaches the handle to the bag body itself the glazing should be tapered down and out you can see on the real vintage kelly how it tapers down and out this is just straight across, which tells me it's not an authentic bag. Another thing that really bugged me when I was examining this, this is a very obvious fake, by the way, so I don't see how you could get fooled by this, but the sangles are very different. Now, the hardware color is also different as well. This is a very gold gold on the Vintage Kelly. This is a, like a very light champagne gold, which is another big tip because Hermes doesn't do light gold hardware, so this bag is very obviously fake. All the hardware choices they have for common bags are are like gold hardware or palladium hardware. And if you're lucky to get a special order, you can pick brush gold, permabrass, which is the light gold or palladium. The pearling detail is also different. This one is a lot more bumpy than the one on my Hermes sangles. The edges of the cutout or the turn lock are a lot different too. This one is a lot more square on the real bag and on this fake mini Kelly, it's more rounded. Something that I've also noted too is that the texture of the Epsom that I got and on an Hermes item I got from the store feels different than the Epsom texture on this handbag. And when I was wearing this in Orlando, Florida, the first day that I wore it out and I got sunscreen on it, a layer of some kind of coating on this Epsom rubbed off, which was disturbing. But I'm also not too terribly surprised because this is a fake handbag, which makes me even more convinced that I do not want to buy a fake now. The other thing too is that the turn locks between the real bag and the fake bag have some difference in feel, but the edges of the turn lock, like the edges of the circle itself, are more rounded than the real one, which are a lot more angular and sharpened angles. They feel boxier and more substantial. The turn lock on this one also doesn't turn as easily as my Vintage Kelly, though my Vintage Kelly is 58 years old, so that could be the reason for it being so loose as well. I do have to admire one detail that they did very well. They got the Epsom texture on the outside, and on the inside they have a different texture of leather, which is similar to the Chev leather that lines Hermes Kelly's that are in Epsom. Because if you buy an Hermes Kelly from the store, I believe it is Epsom on the outside, and then the inside leather, it is Chev in the same color. And Chev is goat skin, so it has a different texture, and they have a goat skin texture on this. So I thought that was like a good detail that they got. I was like, good for you. So I give you a bone for that. You look at the real one versus the fake one. The pearling here is just so fake. Whenever people tell me to look at a logo to verify the Hermes bag for authenticity, I can't tell sometimes. And so I always struggle with this part. 
so I wouldn't rely on this alone when verifying, but it is a really big factor because it is hard to get a font perfectly right, especially when there's so many subtleties. Because if you've ever written a Word document and tried to pick a different font, you know how many different font types there are out there. So same with this. There could be minute differences in the fake that you don't detect. If you see any like quality issues with the bag itself, you know immediately that that could be a fake. And what I mean is like, for example, this hardware has a little bit of rust and the gold has chipped off in the corner of it. Another thing that really truly alarmed me with this bag was, and I'm talking about the fake one, is that this bottom edge is just one single piece of leather versus the real Kelly, there's actually seams and edges. So it's not one piece of leather that's not broken up. It is broken up. So this is one panel broken up by this bottom panel, broken up by another panel of leather in the back. You can see there's a seam. The fake one does not have a seam. It's just seem less. Another detail that really bothered me is that there's an angle that protrudes down. It's not perfectly flat at the bottom of the fake one. Another detail that bothers me about the fake versus the real Kelly too is that the back tab at the end, back of the bag where the singles sit look very different. As you can tell in the camera here, this looks different than this. This also has more of like more raised in the center and then it tapers out and flattens. It looks kind of like a bump. This however is very flat. It's all the same height. There's no depth in difference. Another detail to notice that is very minute as it relates to the strap. Hermes will tuck in their straps in one way and this one does not in the other way. You can tell they're clearly different and the stitching on the Hermes strap is I believe slanted. Yeah, it's hand stitched. The one here is straight so it is also machine stitched. And now, as part of this educational roast, I will be talking about my comparison of having used a real one compared to the fake one. And the fake one has been showing quicker wear since having used it compared to the real one. I didn't want to toss it in the donation pile because at the end of the day, handbags are handbags. Maybe this doesn't align to your particular opinions and views, but I feel like we shouldn't waste things. And it's not like I can go and return this or something and I don't think it's any better to donate it because someone else is going to eventually end up carrying it anyways at the end of the day. It's just a piece of leather. It's a very beautiful item that's been crafted very well out of a piece of leather, but it's still a handbag at the end of the day. And so I just used it. As I mentioned earlier in the video, the sunscreen led to this rubbing off texture on this and the bag is actually very dingy and dirty right now. I can see it at certain angles. I don't know if it's very color accurate either to the actual cray color because it looks creamy, like a creamy off-white. It doesn't look white in other lighting because I know cray is supposed to change in different lights in different lighting situation natural to indoor and stuff but this one doesn't seem to this just doesn't seem to be holding up too terribly well um, glazing has kind of come off on the handle too or I've been trying to rub the sunscreen off so that might be me on my own damaging it but terrible quality the bag is also not superb in the way that the glazing hasn't handled rubbing very well and overall experiences is the fake worth it compared to the real bag no it's not if you love the handbag itself so much don't get a fake and disrespect yourself because it's not worth your money it's a waste of money you're tossing money out to buy something that looks like it but won't actually last in terms of quality factor to why we buy real items is the quality as well as the aesthetics and if you can't save up to buy the real thing then don't buy a fake or a stupid replica, as they call it i would just buy a dupe and a dupe does not mean a replica a dupe means a bag that looks similar but is not obviously copying off the real thing now my boyfriend had the best of intentions buying this. I didn't buy this myself, so please don't come after him or me in the comments, please. But I'm hoping this video was an educated roast for people who either wanted to get the entertainment factor out of this video. Hey, I know I'm lovable. Or <laughs> wanted to actually compare a real item to a fake item if you're considering buying something. If you love couture, style, and analysis, aka CSA, please like and subscribe and turn on the bell to get your weekly notifications of a CSA PSA out of the press weekly because that's all we do on this channel is fashion, fashion history, and couture. So what are you waiting for? If you haven't already, you want to subscribe because you won't want to miss the exciting videos we have coming up. Follow me on my Instagram here and shop my closet. Links in the description down below for my Spongebob and Pop. I'm Mimi, I'm your host, and until our next one, bye!